Okay, so the second talk of the morning, we'll have the third part, we'll talk about the chaos and general holographic space times. Thanks a lot for giving me this opportunity to talk here, and uh, thanks for organizing this beautiful uh, uh, workshop. So today we'll be going to talk about a work we did a year back uh, with uh, when I was a postdoc in Tel Aviv University with people there, uh, uh, Kobe and uh, Walter, who is another postdoc there. And uh, it is something about uh, chaos in uh, general holography. Not only, so I, that by that I mean I will not restrict myself to asymptotically ADS holographies, but in general, holography in general sense. So, uh, this is my outline of my talk. I will start with the uh, extended motivation and introduction, and uh, then I will talk about how this, uh, what is the meaning of these terms like chaos, butterfly effect uh, in, uh, in context of holography, uh, what people uh, try to understand in these cases, and then uh, uh, the third section will be our work where we generalize these uh, things, uh, these results in general holographies and then I will uh, summarize and give some few generations. So, uh, uh, chaos in uh, like very broadly refers to a sensitive dependence on initial condition that is you start with a very similar configuration and as you evolve with uh, some time uh, you will see that uh, these uh, trajectories or the states deviate from each other uh, as time goes to like at uh, large times. And this is more or less generally known as chaos, uh, but there are of course much more mathematical definitions of it. So I, I will be especially talking chaos in context of thermalization, that means that you have a thermal system and then you part of the system and as it goes back yeah, as it goes back to get to a thermal system that is in the process of thermalization, the chaos, uh, this kind of chaos play, uh, plays a role. Uh, in quantum information theory and black holes, this is also known as scrambling. So, scrambling uh, of information uh, by that, I mean that also people, uh, you will understand by the uh, there are various terms. The scrambling is used in various broad sense in various things. What I mean by scrambling is that. Uh, you put a, a bit of information in some uh, soup of uh, like in some thermal bath and then you wait long enough and then uh, what you see is that you cannot get back the information, the initial disturbance by local measurements. You, you can of course, this is a unit evolution, so you can get back uh, things uh, what you, the, about, you can get back the information about the initial disturbance by some non-local measurement, typically order of the uh, system. But you cannot get it back by local measurement, and locally you will again look as thermal. So this is the meaning of scrambling in context of thermalization. So when it was shown like these black holes are the fastest scramblers in nature, that is the scrambling uh, time scale typically goes as the inverse temperature and log of the entropy. In usual system, it generally depends on uh, uh, time uh, like. The amount of time the information will spread over the full system, so it's typically like some polynomial in the degrees of freedom. But uh, this is a log in the degrees of freedom, so in that sense, it's the fastest scrambler. And uh, there's another quantity called Lyapunov exponent, which is basically measures uh, a measure of how uh, how two trajectories, close by trajectories, are deviating. Uh, I will come to a more uh, uh, like, you will not, like I will give a more uh, mathematical definition of it. But this is some parameter in uh, the chaos theories which gives how uh, like uh, how um, how much a trajectory deviates. And uh, this uh, recently, uh, not very recently, but two years back, there was a proposal by Mangasena Shankar at Stanford where they said that the largest Lyapunov of exponent in a system. Is in a quantum system is bounded by a result like 2 pi kbt by h cross, which is uh, which is, like which uh, inequality is saturated in case of uh, they found that in case of a holographic system this uh, thing is uh, saturated, and then uh, they went ahead and made a conjecture that the theories where the bound is saturated would necessarily have a gravity dual. So. This is a stronger form of the uh, stronger form of the conjecture stated in the paper. So, so these things are interesting to find out. Uh, there is a general question like given a system whether you will find, able to find out 
whether the system will have some uh, dual description in, in holography. And this is one kind of uh, test uh, which they suggested. <coughs> and just to point out, in classical chaos, the Yamunov exponent is not bounded. You can have anything. But uh, they showed in quantum mechanics this kind of bound analysis. So, in that paper, they proposed the diagnostic of chaos, which is uh, uh, given by this function C of t, which is some commutator of two uh, local operators, W of t and V of 0. And uh, they, uh, this commutator square, we take a thermal average. With this, for typical generic operators, this is generally small initially. But as time grows, these operators become complex and it can, in general, for generic operators can give order one uh, uh, result. And then they say that this, this is a, in a sense, diagnostic of chaos when this becomes order one, it's chaotic. So it can, in this paper also they give a semi-classical argument why this is true. And if you take a, so this operator to be more like this a momentum operator in quantum mechanics and W to be some uh, position at some time t and if you just uh, take a semi-classical limit but that is by reducing to a uh, Poisson bracket you can show that the C of t is just nothing but the square of change of the trajectories with respect to the initial condition and uh, in, if in a system it grows exponentially then you can know that initially it's order h cross, so it is small, but at large time, with order of log h cross, this can have order 1, this can be order 1. And uh, so typically the, so this lambda l is what I was calling Lyapunov exponent, this is how it deviates, uh, the trajectory is deviated, and this t star, the scrambling time where when it becomes order 1 is given by this kind of value for this system. So there is generally another time scale in the system which is called as dissipation uh, time where the this is this is the time scale where the how the two point functions in this theory uh, <coughs> uh, changes like uh, so it is exponent exponentially done with this factor of t of b and uh, this is typically in system thermal systems are order the inverse temperature. <coughs> So, uh, so there is another function, a related function, uh, this function uh, f of t, which is a particular reordering of this. Uh, so it's related to this c of t, but in a, we take a particular ordering. So we are doing some thermal average with this thermal partition function, and we insert this in in a very typical way uh, in this uh, phrase, and we do uh, do this uh, calculation, and then the conjecture is more uh, rigorously put in terms of this function, rate of growth of this function. And what they say that in time scales much greater than this dissipation scale, that is when all these uh, two point functions have decayed. And time scales much less than the scrambling time, what will you see that this, you can say is the rate of change of this function. So f of t is the function, uh, value of the function uh, around uh, this uh, time scale, the dissipation time. And the rate of change of this beyond this time scale is bounded by this uh, number.
then uh, just to make the different sense of the definitions. But uh, this is not something which you calculate uh, like a child calculator. Somebody is calculating. That's the definition. Yes. But actually, there is a paper yesterday where they calculated these things exp explicitly in modern mechanical systems. I mean, now I have not gone through the paper, it was just yesterday, and uh, they claimed that this, even the system which is classically chaotic, when you calculate these things, these are not like, it doesn't show exponential growth. So, it seems quite important, but I don't know, like, why. Uh, but it's, it's it, I don't know, like, it, it is quite a general uh, thing which is people now using it to diagnose chaos, but uh, so I have to explain that. So apparently there were, these calculations were not there in simple systems. So, uh, so, so this is the bound, the group, uh, somewhat proof with this uh, can give a sufficient evidence to put it as a conjecture in the paper. And uh, so you can see for a chaotic system, if this, the, this kind of uh, functions which can have some exponential uh, growth, then this exponential growth will be uh, bounded uh, by this 2 pi over beta. And here I have said this h cross and kb to be 1, but uh, if you reinsert these uh, scales, then you will get h cross and uh, kb. Boltzmann constant also here. Yeah. So uh, uh, people calculated this uh, this function. Uh, this one benefit of writing uh, uh, one benefit of a C of t. This f of t has a benefit. That this is very easily calculable in holography. Uh, this can be easily casted into a holographic calculation uh, or some geodesics. And people calculated uh, this holographically in two plus one dimension. And there you see that there is some constant minus. Uh, this 1 over n square, which is initially a small number due to this 1 over n square suppression, but as time grows, there is an exponential growing factor. So, this typically this what happens the C of t becomes order 1 near the scrambling time, and which implies that f of t should become small or 0. So, where this, this can become important. So the scrambling time is just given when this becomes order one. That is when it can cancel this term. And uh, this is one. Uh, so, but <coughs> but more rigorously, the bound is on this rate of growth of this function. So uh, for uh, such chaotic and thermal system, a small part emission can change also change the correlation pattern uh, in the system with drastically. So that's why this term uh, is also used, which is called disruption of entanglement or butterfly effect. And uh, the diagnostic, another diagnostic used in this case, kind of case, uh, in this kind of analysis, is this called something called thermo-mutual information. It's a term coined by this uh, people, but although it, this terminology is not exactly used, but uh, I will define it very precisely uh, because I, I, I am going to for my talk using this as a probe, not these other functions. So, and it was recently started in NUCT by various people and we have, uh, but people uh, before our work mainly concentrated uh, these kind of studies only in asymptotically ABS spaces. So, we try to see the behavior of these functions in uh, uh, general holography that is that by that I mean three specific cases. One is the black uh, DP brain and uh, uh, holography and then if she's black brain holography and uh, higher derivative uh, black brain holography. So uh, this is just a general slide for completeness. So I will be just for students also that I have to probably people are aware here that uh, this is uh, by holography I mean that I want to get a knowledge of this uh, uh, very strongly coupled quantum field theories in general in D plus one dimension and in uh, uh, by doing some calculation in, in some limit in classical gravity, uh, which is one less dimension, and uh, this is in general known as holography uh, nowadays. And uh, although it started with some specific example in, uh, from string theory. So, uh, let me, many, I think others are uh, in the beginning of this workshop also, many people have described these quantities, but for completeness, I will do it again. 
And so, but I, I would like to go through it quickly. So, there's something called entanglement entropy in the field theory where you say you take in a some constant time slice the theory and then uh, say there is some in the space like uh, there is some surface given by sigma which divides the system into two and uh, let us assume that Hilbert space also factorizes then you can uh, 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 do uh, integrate out the degrees of freedom uh, uh, living outside this uh, region A uh, say this region B and then uh, uh, this uh, the theory effect, uh, the theory in this region A is now given by some reduced density matrix which is just obtained by if you have given if the system is given by some density matrix you trace over the degrees of freedom living outside and then the entanglement entropy or one number entropy is defined by taking this function the trace of the rule of row. This is usually a very uh, and the, because of being a nonlinear function of this row, it's very difficult to calculate in field theory. But uh, uh, Ru and Takanagi in 2006 saved us by giving some uh, holographic prescription to calculate this quantity. And uh, so this is just so as I was saying, there is some uh, surface sigma which is called the uh, which is which divides the entanglement. Uh, uh, which divides the system into two regions, then if you uh, now in the gravity, in the holography, there is another extra direction. So if you extend the surface uh, sigma in the, in, in the bulk and then minimize this, uh, uh, minimize this surface area uh, given by this gamma of A, and the prescription is to just calculate the area of this uh, surface divided by 4 times g neutral, which will give you the entanglement entropy of the corresponding uh, field theory living at the boundary. So, and it was generalized uh, to time dependent situation, uh, like that is the covariant prescription. So, basically, uh, one uh, simple way is that just to, you have to, uh, rather than doing minimization, you have to do some kind of extremization. Uh, so we are going to use this uh, generalized uh, generalized principle in the because we we have a time dependent situation and in uh, presence of uh, delay term also there were generalization that is the prescription is to you have to take the area in, in Einstein frame and uh, for higher derivative gravity is, uh, also this was generalized uh, some time back and basically instead of area you have to uh, minimize some functional of the curvatures on this uh, surface. So, the, typically if you calculate this uh, in, uh, entanglement entropy in a field theory or by holography, this will have some UV divergences. But you can define some quantity called mutual information, which is, UV, which is, fine, which is a finite quantity. So, if you take this combination, uh, for the system A and B, this bipartite system, and we find this uh, kind of combination of entanglement entropy, you can see that the UV divergences will cancel, and it, this will be a finite quantity. And uh, by strong separability properties of this uh, entanglement uh, entropy, you can show that this uh, basically it states that this mutual information should be greater than or equal to zero. So it's always a positive or zero. So, in some sense, this mutual information measures the total uh, classical and quantum uh, correlation between two regions. So, uh, <coughs> that's why we are interested in this kind of function to see uh, how the correlation gets affected. And there is also an inequality in quantum information theory, where it states that this mutual information uh, between uh, two region A and B is always greater than or equal to uh, is uh, correlation functions for operators. These operators need not be local, but defined in region anchored in region A and region B. And it's a very strong statement. It says that uh, because you see there is a square, so it says that if the mutual information between two region is zero, that means uh, that you imply definitely that this uh, is factorized. And uh, so uh, this is uh, something which is proved in uh, quantum information theory. In, uh, Finite dimensional physical spaces, but this is not a very uh, there doesn't uh, there is no I am not aware of any proof or any kind of formally uh, making this expression more rigorous in the case of uh, quantum field theories. But uh, people uh, generally believe that the mutual information will be zero. The correlation the system 
between two regions is zero, that means there is no correlation between the two systems. So I told you about this Uda canary prescription or how to calculate uh, this um, uh, entanglement entropy holographically. And mutual information is just some combination of the entanglement entropy. So you have to just calculate the corresponding entanglement entropy and take this uh, sum and uh, difference. So if for, uh, this is a cartoon showing that if you have two regions A and B, so this gamma A is a minimal surface which will give, give the entanglement entropy of this and gamma B will give the entanglement entropy of uh, this region B. And uh, notice that for S A union B, you can have two different surfaces like this just which is a sum over these surfaces gamma A and gamma B or you can also have this surface which is a connected surface. So then what you have to do, you have to take the global minima by root of the principle so there is a competition between the two and in the mutual information you can see that if this connected sur surface has a greater area then the SA union B is just SA plus SB, so the mutual information will be zero. So, <coughs> so you can understand also that if you take the A and B to be far and far apart, this will have uh, typically a greater area. So, the mutual information will vanish uh, if you go far enough in this space. <coughs> so, and also now uh, we are interested in finite temperature, so we have to consider black holes in the bulk. And uh, so, uh, so uh, this is a black hole metric, and we have to uh, uh, typically, if you consider ADS, asymptotically ADS black hole, we uh, assume some uh, functional uh, uh, growth of this uh, as uh, goes to infinity. But we, for us, we have some general black geometries, which asymptotes to various kinds of geometries. So. Uh, this is just a recap of, uh, we, you can go now, in a, you know that you can, in a black hole you can go to this to, to scale Zeta's coordinate and you can extend this black hole geometry uh, to, uh, <coughs> to an extended space and then uh, and uh, we will be using this extension of uh, black hole geometry uh, to calculate our quantities and uh, in this coordinate the ADS boundary is generally given uh, by u v equal to minus 1 and singularity at u v equal to 1 but now you don't have to stop at some uh, <coughs> point but you can have this uh, more extended which I will show uh, so uh, this is just to recap that you have this kind of Kutzka Zeka's diagram where the initially the black hole uh, coordinate Schwarzschild coordinate only covered this part but now with the u v coordinate you can extend it and uh, so, uh, and just remember it because we will use it uh, after uh, describing this thermofield double. So in, in a thermal system, you can purify the system by something called a thermofield double. Where you, if you have two, uh, uh, so if you have some uh, thermal uh, QFT, you just make two copies of the Hilbert space and define some pure state in form of this, uh, like a pure entangled state like this where n l is the some uh, the one of the copies stays in one of the copies and n r is stays in the other copy and then you can show that uh, if you calculate uh, the reduced density matrix that is trace over one part of the uh, one of the theories then you will just end up with the thermal density matrix uh, for a black hole so this is uh, used uh, in purifying uh, used in statistical mechanism these things to purify a uh, mean state and uh, so in our context it is important because uh, of this conjecture that uh, this thermophile level uh, can be uh, thermophile level is dual to the maximal extension of uh, e eternal black holes and the uh, pair of uh, QFT is living on the two boundaries given by these and left and right uh, these are the two uh, Q, uh, copies of QFT I was talking about uh, in the thermophile level and uh, the entanglement entropy uh, between uh, the two QFT is just given by the now when you trace over this part of the geometry you will just end up with the black hole and you will of course expect that entanglement entropy uh, is given just by the uh, thermal entropy of the black hole. Ah, now I will come to this quantity which uh, uh, is essential for us to improve this uh, uh, disruption of entanglement of this butterfly effect which is called this thermal mutual information. So, for, uh, 
Till now, what mutual information I was describing was in a particular theory, you are taking two regions and defining some kind of mutual information between them. But for this, it is a generalization of this concept that you have two uh, field theories living on the two boundaries and there you consider two regions in them. Uh, the regions A and B are in the two different copies of the quantum field theory. And you can just, uh, uh, the entanglement entropy, uh, then, then you can define the mutual information by just uh, this uh, the usual way. But now you have to keep in mind that these regions are not in the same field theory, but it's in the two different copies of this thermo field W. So, <coughs> and these kind of calculations were done in this like by in Stanford by uh, in this BTC black hole, where you can show that uh, uh, you can calculate this kind of thermo mutual information and I return. And uh, so just uh, there's another point that uh, so here also you will have connected and disconnected uh, surfaces. So these are the connected surfaces. Uh, <coughs> uh, so these are the disconnected surfaces because it doesn't go through from one region to another. And this is just terminology. And what I mean by connected surface is that which goes from one uh, uh, boundary of the black hole to the other boundary. So typically, if you calculate this thermo-mutual information in this black hole background, in various possible black holes, uh, it doesn't depend much on the asymptotics, but you always, qualitatively, the feature is very similar. That there is, is a critical uh, size of the strip, or the size of the region A and B, beyond which the thermo-mutual information is non-zero. So below which the thermo-mutual information is zero due to the, the due to the thermal fluctuation, it doesn't let the correlation to be there. But if you take large enough uh, subsystems, you can have finite values of this correlation. So uh, now I will try to disturb this system. So this is the, the previously what I showed you was the thermo behavior of thermal mutual information in uh, in just uh, in a thermal system in a, in a black hole. But now I want to uh, part of the system and try to see what it, what is the behavior of this correlation, two-sided correlation in, in uh, as a uh, as a response to this part of vision. What's the shape of this part Yeah, the connected, so what happens is that uh, in this uh, region, uh, the connected surface always have the higher area. So the minimal is really the disconnected regions. So yeah, so this is the, so this has a, for, for small strip sizes, this will have a, a smaller area. So this will be, and uh, you, the SA union B, which is, there is a connected surface of course for AC union B, but AC union B will be just the uh, sum over SA and SP for small uh, regions. So the question is whether it passes through the horizon or, or it's passing through the intersection? Ah, so I am considering a surface that equal to zero and it passes through the intersection at the horizon. Yeah, so this is called this Einstein Rosen region. Yeah. But, but it doesn't go behind the horizon, so you cannot go behind the horizon. Yeah, it doesn't go behind the horizon. No, but yes, if you, go, if you take the surface at some finite time, it goes beyond, behind, behind the horizon. In the, you mean the behind the future horizon, yes. But this isn't a static problem. You cannot do that. Yeah, this system I am considering the surface at equal to zero. But the system is static anyway, so all times are just like this. Yeah, also the yeah, the various people like models and others. So the surface can go in principle go inside. You can know how you want the surface. So this is not so you know like uh, what happens is that there is a the isometry is that the time going this direction and time going in this direction. So but if you impose like if you take a surface from here to here, then 
it's not like although the system is time symmetric, isometric, but because you have taken a surface in a particular way, it will be uh, time dependent. So if you take something here and here iso in an isometric direction, then of course it will just pass through the center and you will not see any change. But if you the force the surface to move in like in an opposite way than the isometry, then you will see a time dependence. And then that those surfaces go inside. And, uh, but we are not doing that. We are also in, we will also introduce time dependence, but in a different way by uh, adding some part elevation or shock wave. <coughs> and uh, I think these are supposed to be in the calculation and various results show that these are somewhat identical. That you get you can do it either way, and you get same up with similar results. <coughs> so. Uh, how will I do it is that I, I will introduce a part action at, uh, uh, at, uh, at some past in, in a particular time in one of the boundaries with some energy delta n which is like the change in the mass of the black hole. So if you in a particular limit, uh, so you are, uh, in, in, this is a shock wave kind of thing you are introducing into the geometry but in a particular limit this calculation becomes very simple. So the limit is that you, cha you change uh, change of e energy is very small compared to the mass of the black hole, and you are considering at a large time such so that the shock wave is hugging the uh, horizon. So then what you can do is that you can just patch two black holes, uh, which is one of the mass m, which is the unparted black hole, and another is of mass m plus delta m. And this patch this geometry smoothly along the uh, line of the shock wave, which is along for this limit of Tw much greater than uh, 1 is basically along this uh, horizon. So you place these two black holes along the horizon and from various continuity of the coordinates in the geometry you can, what you can find, say the black hole UV coordinate of this black hole is given by U tilde V tilde and this part is UV and by smoothness condition you can easily show that this what happens is that U tilde is the same coordinate system like you don't have to do anything but U and V tilde are related by a shift, which is this uh, alpha and this alpha depends on the time of shock wave and also the energy of the shock wave and various things and uh, what Shenge Stanford in the uh, appendix of their paper was showed that this can be very generically calculated for any geometry, any black hole geometry in any dimension and this has always as I see, this kind of form well, this is given by some delta m times the temperature of the black hole divided by the entropy of the uh, black hole and with some exponential behavior uh, which is exponentially grows according to this uh, it, uh, as you change the time of the shock wave and it depends on some cutoff at the boundary. But uh, the whole result is cutoff independent like how you choose this coordinate R star by this because this quantity is also limited depend on the specificities of the geometry. But these, the one thing to notice is that these are all order one some quantities. It depends on the geometry. But this has some uh, very generic form. And you can just show this uh, thing by just using uh, packaston hawking formula and first law of thermodynamics. <coughs> so what I said is that once I introduce this uh, shock wave, uh, this geometry is like looks like a shift in this around the horizon, the coordinate is somehow as a delta function shift in the geometry and this uh, shift alpha is given by, given as a function of the time of application of the shock wave and the energy and the horizon entropy. So this is basically uh, looks, the geometry looks like that and uh, what, you can, uh, what you can say is that uh, Heuristically, you can calculate some of the scrambling time. Just saying that you will say that the uh, uh, system has scrambled, at, at least the two sided uh, correlation have lost when uh, this uh, the effect of this uh, shock wave is order one. That is, the alpha is order one. And if you just say alpha equal to one, you can just invert the relation and just calculate the scrambling time and which is just given by beta over 2 pi log of the entropy just inverting the, the general result with some order 1 correction which depends on the specificities of the geometry uh, which geometry you are take, uh, which you take asymptotes and various things but these are all order 1 uh, 
quantity in a sense of entropy which grows as the n square. So I, in that sense I say these are order 1 and this is a large contribution in holographic calculations. So this is, uh, so this is was the uh, suspect uh, uh, limit or uh, uh, saying that this scrambling time goes as law well of the entropy. But uh, this is a kind of a heuristic statement, this alpha order of 1. I, we didn't at least uh, when we read this we didn't understand why uh, uh, how this will always give the scrambling and we wanted to see it explicitly in examples whether alpha order one you can expect them in the correlation to vanish. Mm. But then, I mean this is I mean as you say it's very heuristic. But even they also compute this out of time order Ah, yes, it's for a particular system, yes. Uh, because then uh, for the BTZ black hole. Exactly. Yeah, but from that, also it was not clear to us, maybe you, uh, any of you can uh, elevate this point, like with why alpha has to be ordered one for any generic geometry or anything. Yes, uh, this is a number, but that only compute this uh, board point, order for like, mm -hmm. and then somehow the alpha is related to the top. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. So, uh, but those kind of calculation people may be in BTC geometry, uh, where you can do it analytically. I don't, I am not aware of any other calculation. Uh, no, they, immediately after their paper, there was a bit where they generalized it to uh, asymptotically ADS, but they didn't do the four point function, they again did the thermal mutual information. Uh, but uh, we wanted to see in examples whether it's really that it vanishes in alpha order or one. So uh, we are interested in looking for signature of this disruption of entanglement and correlation to small perturbation like that. And uh, so in the shock wave geometry corresponding to a small perturbation of the thermofield level, we can calculate this two-sided mutual information. A result of which I showed in the just the pure geometry. Now we can repeat the same calculation with this perturbation in the geometry. So as we have seen before, this thermal mutual information is non-zero only beyond some uh, critical strip size. So, okay, we will start with that uh, uh, critical beyond uh, uh, sub-geometry sizes which is beyond, uh, which is larger than this critical, such that this initially starting point is that the thermal mutual information is non-zero. And what we want to do is that with this non-zero value of thermal mutual information, we introduce the shock wave and calculate again and see what happens uh, with the what happens to the thermal mutual information as time of the shock wave grows. So it's, it's it essentially the same calculation, but with this shift in this geometry. And uh, one thing to is notice is the general behavior of this uh, what what kind of behavior we expect from this mutual information in this geometry. One thing you notice that this kind of connected uh, surface calculation which doesn't pass through this uh, uh, horizon will not know about the shift. If the shift for in this limit is a delta function shift in the horizon, in this uh, uh, geometry. So what will happen is this, this connected calculations that, that, may, that by that I mean SA and SB will be exactly the same as if there was no shock wave. So these are only functions of this subsystem sizes, this SA and SB. But now these surface which pass through the horizon and now you see that it goes beyond the horizon. So the surfaces which goes uh, behind the horizon, that is this process, this process the shock wave, uh, then that will be sensitive to this alpha or the time at which the shock wave is applied and various specificities of the shock wave. Apart from being also dependent on the subsystem size as before. So we started with something which is non-zero, that means that alpha equal to zero where there was no shock wave, this has a, some positive number. Now we want to see as alpha grows, if this grows monotonically, what happens that this can become zero. So we want to see this behavior in this geometry. So uh, we define a scrambling time as when uh, this, uh, this function vanishes for a given uh, length of uh, the subsystem which is greater than the critical length. And uh, <coughs> what you can show that it, again is that's true that for various geometries we calculated you get this piece uh, beta or 2 pi log of the entropy as the heuristic calculation says 
with some uh, finite details, uh, finite changes, uh, if you do this calculation explicitly in various geometries, which is some order uh, one quantity. So basically the heuristic argument was correct, but uh, I don't think we have a better understanding why it was correct. Uh, so uh, this is a typical behavior of this uh, thermal mutual information in all these geometries. You start with some non-zero value after a certain point at t equal to t star, which gives some alpha star, this vanishes. And uh, uh, this is what we found in all the cases, like leaf shells and the black leaf prints and everywhere. But apart from uh, some uh, parameter region of the higher derivative gravity where the behavior changes drastically. So I will come to that, but most of the system qualitatively the behavior is this. So just to uh, tell you uh, what was, uh, just to show you an analytical result which was calculated by Schengen and Stanford in this uh, BTC black hole. Uh, it just looks like this, the mutual information, you can just calculate it analytically. This is coming from SA and SB which is just a function of length and then you have this piece which is dependent on this alpha and alpha in this BTC you can uh, geometry is just given by this. So and uh, E uh, by E is the uh, initially what I was calling the delta M or E is the energy of the shock wave. So and you can just uh, uh, calculate when this is zero at least in the limit of high temperature but uh, there by that I mean high temperature compared to the subsystem size. So L of L times C is much better than one, you can just calculate it analytically to be this value, the square in time. So there is this piece which is a log of the entropy uh, and there is some dependence on the subsystem size also. But these are order one dependence in terms of the end counting. So, <coughs> so actually in this case uh, you can also calculate this uh, yeah, the function f of t which is a four point function out of time four point function because both of the things, the root again and surfaces and by uh, you can calculate four point function by geodesic approximation that is calculated in geodesics in a geometry they are same thing in this dimension so you can just from the length of the geodesics you can calculate both mutual information and this function f of t uh, by using geodesic approximation or calculating correlation functions so you can see that here also uh, from f of t, if you just uh, do a uh, expansion in small alpha, and this 2m is the conformal dimension. So you, what you will see is that there is a from this exponential, uh, the f of t has a some exponential growth, as I was saying in the beginning in the motivation. And uh, so initially f of t where alpha is zero is order one, then it start decaying exponentially in time. Uh, which is uh, and it goes to zero at the order of the scrambling time, and uh, so this is uh, this you can do in BTZ black hole, but in uh, in higher dimension the Ruta Kennedy surface, which is a co-dimension two surface, and the geodesic is very different thing. So in principle there is no relation between them, but there are these two proof, uh, proofs exist. You can either calculate this uh, effect of scrambling by this, uh, calculating this function f of t and seeing the exponential fall off, or you can just calculate uh, something like thermal mutual information, which is given by this co dimension two surfaces, and see when the thermal mutual information is zero. In some respect, when you are doing uh, the numerical calculation, the other one, the thermal mutual information, is better because you can just identify where it vanishes. But here it's a little bit difficult because we have to get the exponential behavior and calculate the exponent. So it's intense in terms of doing it numerically. So the mutual information is a better proof. But it will be always better to understand the connection uh, between these two functions in higher dimension in general. So I have a yeah, so I will just, because qualitatively the systems look, uh, the, this result is very similar, uh, I will just go through these things quickly. So we just looked into the black dependence, which you know is a now dual to some p plus 1 dimensional Yapman's theory, which is in general for p not equal to 3 corresponds to non conformal field theories. And uh, <coughs> so uh, p not equal to 3 in general has some non trivial dilaton. 
So you have to use the modified view that gallery. That is, you have to calculate the area in the Einstein frame. So you have to specify the frame in which you are calculating. And uh, the validity of supergravity puts some in, in, uh, restriction on the allowed region of this. Uh, uh, so it puts some uh, restriction on the uh, radial coordinate. So it's not like, unlike ADS, it's not extended to the full uh, R coordinate. But you need to put an UV cutoff, so the calculation will be cutoff dependent. And the validity other end can be achieved, the higher end can be achieved by appropriately choosing a temperature, such that it cuts off the other, uh, other part. But you may now ask, like, we saw that the surface goes inside the horizon. So can you also justify that? But you can check the surfaces never goes far beyond the horizon, but a little bit. So still you can achieve with high enough temperature, you can trust these geometrical calculations. So in uh, here the entropy, you can just also calculate the entropy which is some function of, of course, this P and also a dimension to full T to proof coupling, unlike before. So P equal to 3, this proof coupling and independence goes to 0. And, uh, also, the holography somehow is not very well defined. The theory become non-local in uh, P greater than equal to 3. So, as I showed that this mutual information also have very similar uh, results for various values of P. For P equal to 5, it goes on and on. So, but uh, the problem is also for, so the cutoff dependence, the UV cutoff dependence in this calculation. So, this is the T star we get. The UV cutoff dependence is not important in the sense that as lambda goes to infinity, this term goes to zero for uh, for all the uh, t brains less than five. But for p equal to five, there is a logarithmic divergence comes from the uh, uh, from uh, this cutoff. Uh, this cutoff grows logarithmically with lambda. But uh, we don't know because this uh, this holography is also not very well defined. So we don't we don't want to comment on that. But other than that, all the calculations shows very similar result. So then we started the, another case which was this Lipschitz platform, which was corresponding to the non-relativistic uh, scale invariant theories, that is time and space scales differently, and this Z is uh, the exponent which is not equal to 1 gives you this uh, anisotropic scaling. So the holographic word to such theories is uh, believed to be this uh, Lipschitz platforms. And you can again calculate the entropy, which will be some function of temperature appropriately given by this uh, uh, and <coughs> this z. And then uh, the general law is that the, this uh, root academy principle is not modified for this kind of calculation, but of course it's not true uh, in these theories. But we so we went ahead and just use uh, use root academy to calculate this, and again you will see this qualitatively very similar feature that it goes to zero at alpha some order one quantity. So as I told you, so there is this piece, uh, like there is this large n uh, uh, result, and there are some order one corrections which you can calculate, but these are not very important. <laughs> Solutions. Uh, so Einstein gravity corrected with higher curvature terms. 
It corresponds to one from one theories with uh, at finite t with uh, non unequals like central charge A and C are different. So the most general higher uh, curvature uh, with second order equation of motion is uh, known as the Lovelock theory. And we are considering uh, <coughs> uh, four plus uh, one dimension. Uh, uh, so five, four plus one dimensional Lovelock theory, which just corresponds to addition of the Gauss bonnet term in the einstein hilbert action. And uh, also the uh, high derivative corrections in the bulb corresponds to uh, two uh, large uh, two corrections in the dual field theory. So, <coughs> so we consider the, uh, this Gauss bonnet gravity, which is the usual Einstein plus the uh, cosmological constant plus this Gauss bonnet term. Which comes in a very uh, specific configuration, a uh, specific combination, such that the, the equations are second order. And uh, so, the, the, for a Gauss bonnet black hole, it, uh, this entropy and everything was calculated. And there is another, uh, from causality constant, it is known that this Gauss bonnet coupling can, cannot be very large, it has to be restricted to a small window between this, but it can take both negative and positive values. Negative and positive means whether C will be greater than A or A uh, or A is greater than C. And so it's uh, both are allowed, but it's restricted to a very small window. I am I am I am emphasizing this point because we found very different behavior given whether this two uh, this coupling uh, Gaussian coupling is positive or negative. Uh, and uh, you know, like uh, uh, this Gaussian uh, Gaussian theory is not uh, exact. If you take it as exact, the exact theory is not causal. It was shown. So, but we are assuming that this is some approximation of uh, some more higher derivative uh, theory. So, in that that case, uh, this Ruta Kanani uh, calculation was uh, uh, generalized by these people, and uh, we used their uh, this uh, uh, this thing. Calculate the now calculate again the surface areas and these things in this high derivative gravity. And what we found the lambda positive is not very the Gaussian uh, the Gaussian coupling being positive is not very interesting because you again this is lambda equal to zero, so you get again the same kind of behavior. But what we see that as soon as you turn on any negative value of this uh, coupling, uh, you have another surface at some point uh, because. This kind of uh, this is a little non-trivial because this Gauss bonnet uh, theory is the black holes are very square roots and these things. So what happens is that these surfaces were always there, but these were complex surfaces. But at certain values of this alpha, it becomes a real surface, and you will uh, and there are some jumps. And so there are two jumps. One is here. So so the, if you just continue with this surface, it would have been like this. But what you see is that. Uh, Around this region, around this value of alpha, there is another surface, and this surface is very weird because this surface lies very close to the singularity at these values of alpha. So you expect that you have to consider more and more curvature corrections to see whether this surface survives. But this is very weird because of this jump. And uh, because you have by Ruta Kanagi, you have to always take the minimal area. This has the, the surface line at the close to the horizon, close to the singularity of the black hole as a minimal area. And then if you proceed further, beyond this value, all the surfaces become complex. And there is no connected solution suddenly. So it's not doesn't go continuously to zero, but suddenly this connected solution is not there. So you have only the disconnected solution, so it jumps to zero at certain value of uh, time, which you can find as scrambling time, but it doesn't go smoothly to zero. And after we uh, wrote our paper, we were talking with people because we were not very sure of this behavior, and then, then we found that uh, uh, the Elena Gisaris and uh, the group in Mexico, they found a very similar behavior when they, they were studying uh, ADS weather uh, space times and uh, they were not interested in thermal mutual information or chaos. They were looking at how entanglement grows with time in ADS weather space time with Gauss corrections. And they found a very uh, similar behavior. So this is there. At least if you trust the Gauss uh, approximation. And I think that you should be able to trust it here because this is the point where the surface lies very close to the horizon. So where the curvature is not very high. 
So so uh, so this was our result, and uh, let me summarize now. So what we discussed is uh, this, uh, this concept of this chaos and scrambling or butterfly effect, these various terminologies in context of holography. And we have shown that this uh, dual uh, therm thermal field theory scrambles information at time scales. By scrambling, I mean when the thermal visual information is zero, at, at the correlation between these two sides because uh, this entangled pair in the thermal field level, two sides are maximally entangled, but the correlations become zero. So at time scales given by this uh, uh, log of the entropy for various kinds of holographic systems and uh, so as I said that uh, okay so the results are qualitatively similar in conformal, non-conformal and non-relativistic cases for conformal theory with A not equal to C there is this dual to Gauss bonnet black hole the behavior we saw can be very different depending on the sign of the coupling so uh, so, so some future relations that uh, so we use this thermal visual information as a proof of scrambling uh, with the whole region in two different copies of the field theory. One thing is that there is a hope that it will be useful to express this in, in terms of a single field theory. Various quantities in thermal when you uh, do this right in terms of this uh, thermal field W, you can translate into single side. But uh, for in general, this is not very well known how thermal, thermal mutual information will translate to a single sided quantity. And uh, in the 1 plus 1 dimension, you can do uh, that because it's basically some four point function of twist operators. So you can write in a particular time ordering. But this kind of things is not available in higher dimensional things. So, and another thing is the exponential fallout is out of time four point correlation function is used as a probe of scrambling. Connection to chaos is more transparent because there is a definition of uh, the uh, Lyapunov exponent there, uh, more transparent in terms of that, in a sense that it can be somewhat motivated semi classically. But, uh, the, but the other quantity which should be used is the thermal mutual information. It will be better to know how it is directly related to this uh, out of time four point correlation function, which is not clear for higher dimension. In uh, BTC black hole or 1 plus 1 dimension system, these are just the same thing. In some cases, these things don't match. Is it chaotic in terms of? Mutual information and non chaotic in terms of other than other protectors. Even in the simplest cases. And is there somebody who looked uh, rigorously? Yeah, yeah. public. So, so you, you just grab the. Just grab a rational safety mm -hmm. and put the West Wing with the like, SU and K. And you will see that you may be able to take the mutual information go away. But the out of time other correlators are not there. So, but I mean, even in this very simple case, they don't match. So, I don't know, I don't know if it will match in the Yeah, it will be interesting to do this thermal visual, but uh, there is no percentage. But yeah, it is more, much more simple quantum mechanical system. Yeah, so, I mean, see, it was. I mean, it would be nice to see also these guys from yesterday. Yeah, the, the, the same thing. Mm -hmm. Mutual information should be seen by Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I was thinking about that. And uh, so, uh, so uh, one thing is that whether this hybrid, whether this behavior which we saw, saw for this Gauss bonnet theories, uh, whether it has significance, we can only tell if we do higher derivative, more and more corrections, and see whether this uh, surfaces survive. But still, it is interesting that this peculiar behavior is there about the jumping, the surfaces being imaginary and this thing. So, an extension, of course, to non commutative theories and higher derivative, general higher derivative uh, theories of confining uh, theories will be interesting. And some of the follow up works by various other people have looked into these things in, in this uh, last year, like uh, Simon and uh, Reynolds, and uh, where they looked at charts, uh, uh, charts cases, and uh, Huang et al., where they looked at these non commutative geometries. And uh, 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 Alicia Iya looking at these uh, general higher derivative corrections. But uh, I think the qualitatively similar things happen. 
So it's not very thing, very drastically very different things what you uh, notice. But it's interesting to look uh, because we still I don't think we still have a general idea why these things are happening uh, in general holographies. So it's an interesting uh, exercise to do in various cases. Thank you. This is an operation which is done purely as a mathematical tool because what does it mean to introduce a shock wave into this space now? Because you, your diagram presents an eternal black hole from now to uh, modify in some way. Yeah, you are doing some local part of the field Okay, because uh, just let me look at the way that you do the diagram, maybe I'm reading too much into it. But it looks like when you introduce that shock wave, um, you, you've done something peculiar to your, your zero coordinates. Now, in that regard, the surface that you draw, um, is that a smooth surface? Because if you foliate your space and you draw the associated R tree for that, there's a topological discontinuity because your R tree separates, which makes me think that that surface should no longer be smooth, which if you're doing a calculation on that surface, you should expect a jump because you've introduced the, uh, a topological obstruction. That, that point is now it's, it's your, your 
the like matrix the space and it's not separated. The solutions are all smooth, like these are the surfaces are smooth surfaces. Okay, because it, it just, maybe it's just the way it's been drawn, but I would expect that to no, not no, be a smooth no, surface. No, it's not only drawn, like the calculated surface, and see that these surfaces are smooth surfaces. Okay. Any questions? Yes, thanks, speaker.